sure that's off. Hello? How are you? It's Jeannie. Welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. I hope you're all doing well. Someone had asked me about my recipes and how I go about meal planning, something like that. And so we've got some guests coming next week from Germany. I think I've mentioned this. And we're going to go on a little vacation with them for about a week. And then we're going to come back here and they're going to stay for another couple of weeks. And so I'm really excited about that. These are some of our best, dearest friends who live in a town called Ulm in Germany. And um, it's right on the Danube, the Danau. And in, in this little town, it's not too little actually, but it's a beautiful city. Look it up. Ulm, U-L-M, on the Danau. And it, it, we love visiting uh, Germany. It's one of our favorite places. We have lots of friends there. And so one of the things that I'm really looking forward to is um, our meals together, going out to different restaurants together, um, traveling around this part of California with them. And so it's, it's going to be fun and I'm really excited. So I'm trying to plan ahead and be prepared for meals. And I am a planner, so I, I like to have a general sense of everything in order. Um, I'm not held hard and fast to it. I'm very flexible. If we do something that I planned on a Monday and, and instead do that on a Thursday, that's fine with me. Or if we abandon it altogether, that's fine with me as well. So I enjoy entertaining. And what I've learned is being a list maker and being a planner has helped me because um, in the past, I've tended to take on too much and try to be too much of a Martha Stewart, you know, and uh, and that's all fine and well and good if you have the time and the wherewithal and, you know, you can do all that. And sometimes I do. But I also have learned in my older age that it's okay to fly by the seat of my pants. So what I like to do is have a general outline of the day of what our meals will kind of be. And like I said, if we abandon something and go out to lunch or go out to dinner, that's fine. But I like a basic outline. So in planning for this, I was just for the fun of it, looking through, and I've shown this before in some earlier videos, this book, it's from 1909, 1908, 1909, from my, my great-grandmother, Household Discoveries and Mrs. Curtis's Cookbook. And then, from my mom's house, as we're still sorting through her stuff, I found this, and I remember this from when I was a kid. And it's the Women's Home Companion Cookbook. Now, this is from 1950-something or other. And 1955. But it was first published in 1942. So this is a 1955 version. And of course, a lot changed from 1942 to 1955. Of course, there is a world war and, you know, rationing and things like that to kind of the more, I don't want to call it affluent 50s, but, you know, people are home from the war, particularly men. 
um, and life is starting to return to normal. And so things like this, I can see this book having been a gift for somebody who was just newly married. And the thing I like about this book is it goes into everything. How to set a table. Um, you know, not just the recipes, but, you know, how to prepare a good, healthy, well-rounded, nutritionally for the 50s meal. And really teach, say, a new young woman who actually did most of the cooking back then. Nowadays, of course, men are having a great time in the kitchen. And a friend of mine, she was telling me that her husband, they've both retired and he's just becoming a whirling dervish in the kitchen. And I think that's awesome. Now, my husband does not go in the kitchen. And it's just what we've, it, it's how we've created that over the years. He will, you know, fill up the coffee tank with water. He might make yogurt with berries on his own, you know, and not make the yogurt, but, you know, pour it out and put berries in it. And he will have a handful of nuts. But other than that, he doesn't do anything in the kitchen. So anyway. Trying to learn to swallow very quietly. <laughs> it's hard. You know, I'm kind of a slurper, but I don't like to hear slurping. So, anyway, I wanted to show you some of the pictures in here. Now, I remember this from my childhood because, as you will see, I got a hold of this and colored or, or um, scribbled all over the pages. And I have a vague memory of doing it. So this must have been in our household. And I got a hold of it and just started scribbling. So, I mean, just scratchy little marks, you know, random. So if it had any value, it doesn't now. Another thing I love about these old cookbooks are the photographs. And if you've ever looked, and you can Google this, if you've ever looked online at food from the 60s and 70s, some of those molded foods, molded salads and meats and whatnot, you know, and the whole color scheme, some of them are just vile and um, cringeworthy. So this book has a few of those. Now, something else that I really appreciate about this book is it shows you, or tells you, how to have a dinner, how to plan a dinner and serve a dinner without a maid. So we're just going to go with that because I don't think my maid is showing up to help me with any of the food. Um, so, and it talks about how to set a table, a proper table, which, I'm sorry, it's a little too formal for me. Um, sometimes at Christmas I go all out or Thanksgiving. So, look at this. You know, just the various diagrams. And that's a very basic, this is, 
so similar to what I do if I do have a separate um, bread plate. Very pretty. Anyway, so I'm going to kind of look through here for some, you know, ideas. But my real, my true go-to for planning is my own binder that I've created. Let me show you this. Sorry, I'm already making a mess. My sister-in-law several years ago got me this binder. And it came with a bunch of clear plastic pages. And so I actually sat down and put my recipes in here. Now, my recipes mostly consist of something I might have printed off the internet or torn out of a magazine or written down from a friend who, you know, I asked for a particular recipe. And it's divided into sections. Appetizers, beverages, breakfasts, grains, main dishes, meats, poultry, salads, breads, seafood, what's that say? Soups and stews, vegetables, and pasta. And missing from here is desserts because it wouldn't fit. I have too many. So I made a separate binder for my desserts. Look at all these. And there are some real treasures in here, for instance, Something from, you know, my mother-in-law, my husband's mother, who's passed away, and it's all in her, write, her handwriting. And if I cut something out of a magazine and try it and like it, it goes in my binders, one or the other. So I'm going to show you some of my favorites, kind of my go-to recipes that I know I like. I know that they go over well and what what is that saying? Never try a new recipe on a guest because too much can go wrong if you don't know what you're doing with that particular recipe. But I've, done, I, I've tried all kinds of new things. Um, I use guests actually as uh, guinea pigs for my, some of my experiments. And another thing with me and recipes is I rarely stick to them as they're written. I do a lot of improvisation and little additions here and there because I feel like cooking, baking, things like that are open to interpretation and it's almost like an art form. And I know I like things, for instance, with, you know, cooking, I like things on the spicier side um, or more savory. I Why make something if it's going to be bland? So I really zest things up with a lot of um, herbs and spices that we, you know, get from France and various places in the world. Um, so anyway, let me show you some of these. Now, there's one here. I put it on top. But I make this for my husband because he loves a good apple pie. And I often make notes 
if I like something or not. And so I've got Fantastic on it and the homemade pie crust recipe. I've got Excellent. So I know those are my go-to recipes for pie. Okay. So I'll show you some of what I may be planning and then what my next step is once I've kind of pulled some ideas out of these binders. So the recipes I use, again, they're in a, they're wrapped in in a plastic page covers. But invariably I spill or knock something over so they get wet even inside the plastic. Like this one. So there is a guy on YouTube that I love. It's called the French Cooking Academy. And it's a French guy and he breaks down some French recipes. And um, that's, listen, you can, you can do a search on him. He and his wife do these videos on, and one of my favorites is the beef organillon. Let me tell you, this recipe is a little, you know, there's some a little work, a little prep involved, mise en place, you know, you get everything in its place, you do everything, all your prep stuff ahead of time, and then it goes very quickly. But one of my favorite is the beef bourguignon, and I've made this, oh, I can't tell you how many times, maybe, maybe six or seven times. So that is one of my go-to recipes, and it freezes well, so I like that. So that'll be one of my, one of my go-to, and you can make a huge amount, and I'll make it in a great big pot. Usually I double things and um, freeze part of it in two cups portions so that we can just pull it out of the freezer and, you know, let it thaw and heat it up. Um, you know, you don't have to go through the effort twice. So, let's see, what else? And I've mentioned before that we kind of watch our carbs. Um, and so, I've looked at a lot of various keto recipes and so I've got some really good, delicious keto recipes, particularly for meats and main dishes, often for bread type things. Um, I, they don't, I, I haven't had much success. So. And I will have good bread when we have guests. I'm, I'm not um, a 100% stickler. So now, once I go through and pick out my main dishes for what we're going to be having over the next couple of weeks and, and allowing for going out to um, different places for dinner, I think about what we'll be doing for lunch or breakfast. Um, now, I don't really eat breakfast. I don't eat until about maybe uh, 10 at the earliest typically 11 or 12. I'll have some nuts, some olives, some cheese, maybe a protein drink, and that's it. That's kind of my breakfast. And then maybe some <clears throat> cheeses, salad, something later on in the day, and then kind of a dinner, usually by five, and we're done eating by six. Now I know when we have guests, our timetables, get thrown out the window as well. It's, you know, whatever is whatever. So let me show you something. For me, 
I wanted a simple meal planning book that wasn't too convoluted and too complicated to use. Simple, basic, and a good planner. And so what I made, cat hair. So what I actually made and have published on Amazon, and I'll put in the link, is this meal planner book. And so I've started already. making a list of some of what we're going to be needing. So I have the week starting on a Monday, but whether this is Sunday or Monday or Tuesday, like I said, it's all open for being shuffled around. And it's got BLD, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now, interestingly enough about that, my husband calls dinner supper, despite my correction that it's dinner. He's not from the South, he's not from the Midwest, but he calls it dinner, a uh, supper. And I find that a little odd for our area. It, it's kind of a, it's a, it's a term we don't use. Now I was born and raised in California he was born and raised in Montana, and then some of the uh, part of his life he lived in the Olympic Peninsula, west of Seattle. And uh, I don't think they say supper there either. So where he picked that up is beyond me. I feel like he watched maybe too much, you know, Mayberry RFD, you know, or <laughs> listening to Aunt B. I don't know. And then we watch a lot of BBC, and we'll see that they use the word tea. Um, you know, we're going to have our tea now. And I used to think tea was just a cup of tea. But no, tea is dinner or something. Anyway, if you are in the UK, and or maybe even in, in Australia or Canada, I don't know. Um, but... You know, what is it that you say, you know, with dinner, supper, tea? Oh. I'm drinking Betty's Earl Grey. <clears throat> and I use the sachets instead of the loose tea just because it's easier to make. And I'm down to like my last four blown through the whole box that my friend from York sent me. So I'm going to have to go on and order some more because I love Betty's. I love, 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 love Betty's. And I do have the loose tea. So I was just in a tea shop in El Dorado Hills this past weekend. Um, there is a, uh, Harvest Festival, Kids Harvest Festival there in downtown El Dorado Hills. So we were walking around and uh, I met one of our daughters and her husband and our granddaughter, our two-year-old granddaughter. And so we were tooting around and we went into this tea shop and I bought some Earl Grey, but it wasn't called Earl Grey. I'll put it in what it was. I think they called it Colonel Gray. I think it was called Colonel Gray. And I made some yesterday and it was really good. I bought a few ounces. If I go through that and like it as much as Betty's, I may get more. So, rambling on about tea again. So now, as I use my meal planner, um, I'll go through and see what I do have, what I need, um, and what I need to buy, and make a list according to fruits and vegetables, our meats, um, dairy, what frozen, what snacks I need, 
um, various uh, specialty ingredients, and I do that for the whole week. And because for me, the grocery store is not convenient. Where we are, everything is a drive. And I, I mean, we've got a little market not too far from us, so I could run and grab eggs or milk or something like that. Um, you have to check expiration dates. But overall, I do my basic shopping once a week, and so this helps me. And um, I've really come to depend on using this for for planning generally what we're going to have and what we're going to be needing for entertaining. So anyway, as I was going through this Women's Home Companion cookbook, because men didn't do this, I guess. The publishers thought, oh, look at this. Look at some of my beautiful artwork. I've made this a masterpiece. I noticed that in their menu planning for a week, they have on Sunday breakfast consisting of melon, eggs in a nest with bacon, wheat muffins and jelly, coffee. Then they have dinner and then they have supper. So breakfast, dinner and supper on this page, but then on another page, it's breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So, go figure. On one of these pages, one of the options for, um, for dinner is schnitzel. Now, that is one of the things that I am so looking forward to, is our German friends cooking schnitzel. Now, I make it sometimes, but the way they do it is so good. And schnitzel can be made from just about any kind of cutlet of meat. And if you're a vegetarian and you don't want to hear carnivore stuff, skip this. Move on. Because when I'm in Germany, I cannot get enough schnitzel. If we're in Germany for two weeks, I will have schnitzel for lunch or dinner maybe seven or eight times. That's how much I love it. You, it, it, how they prepare it, you know, dip it, flour, crumb, you know, and then frying it, and then the seasonings, and sometimes the sauce, depending on the kind of schnitzel. There are various kinds of schnitzels and sauces. You could have a dry schnitzel. You could do a cream sauce schnitzel in over it. Um, Jaeger schnitzel, which is like the hunter schnitzel. And um, honestly, you could schnitzel my shoe, and I would love it. You could schnitzel anything. Eat it and love it. I'm a schnitzel feed. So I am so looking forward to our friends, Rosie and Wolfie, coming and taking over my kitchen. And another thing that I love that they make is the German potato salad. And I'm sure there aren't any carbs in that. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. You know, good, good food. Life is too short to suffer, you know, on a diet your whole life. You know, overall, I'm careful. But um, when it comes to food, I love food, and I'm not going to be deprived for the rest of my life. So anyway, I just kind of wanted to share all this with you. So what I'm probably, some of my go-to recipes will be a meatloaf. I make a great meatloaf. Lots of flavor. You make it big and then you've got sandwiches. Um, 
the beef bourguignon. Again, same thing and with some really good French bread. Now that's something else I love is really good French bread bread. And I've made some really good breads and it's worth it. Uh, good bread. Oh, 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 I save up for it. Things like this. Bread and good butter. My good French Eshery butter. Um, pull it out of the freezer, put it in the fridge and have that ready. So the meatloaf, the beef bourguignon, good French bread. Um, let's see, what else? The schnitzel. Um, we'll make a ton of schnitzel. Um, I've got lots of soups that I, soups and stews in the freezer that I've made. Those are easy to pull out for lunches. Um, salads, of course. Oh, we will probably barbecue a bit. Um, I meant we'll do a couple of casseroles. Like I, I make this one broccoli, chicken broccoli casserole with mushrooms. That's really good, full of flavor and an easy, easy recipe. Um, let's see. Oh, I know. Spaghetti. Because I've got a gazillion jars of sauce marinara. And you take these jars of marinara, put them in, you know, a pot and you can zest them up and Wolfie and Rosie, our friends, make the spaghetti that is mind-blowing. It's hot and spicy, which is wonderful, but it's so good. So I will, we will definitely have some spaghetti. And as far as snacks, I love making our own hummus. I love hummus and homemade. It's so easy and it's so fresh and delicious and you can make it extra garlicky, extra peppery, extra lemony, any way you want. And usually I make a huge tub of hummus. Um, and there are lots of great recipes out there. It's very simple to make. We'll probably do something like a Taco Tuesday because they don't do those in Ulm that I know of. I used to belong to a meal subscription thing. I think you got two or three meals a week and it was when things were really, really busy for us and I thought I'm going to try this out. And some of the recipes were really fantastic and super simple and so I saved those recipe cards like a crispy parmesan chicken um, super easy or a um, what was it it was a chicken with um, mozzarella and like a parm chicken parmesan you know type of thing very easy well I just wanted to kind of share with you a little blah 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 about what I'm doing kind of today, getting all this recipe stuff in order, my grocery shopping in order. Um, and you know, we'll do one of the things we'll do once they do get here is we're going to do a Costco run because they don't have Costco and they just they come to our Costco. And we're just like, wow. You know, they're not used to seeing things like quite like this. Um, honestly, when we're in Europe, whether it's France or Germany or Holland, uh, Netherlands, um, I like the shopping that they do in the villages there. You go to a meat store for your meats, you know, and you just walk down to your village you know, the Stadtmitte, um, and do your farmer's markets every weekend and you get your vegetables right there. Here, we don't have that. Here where I live, I know we do. We're in California. We have lots of farmer's markets, but I don't want to drive for half an hour to go to one. Um, I love how they do their food shopping Particularly, you know, where we spend a lot of time in Ulm. In Ulm, 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 in Ulm, Herum, for those Germans. Um, and so I 
wish we could shop more like that here, but, you know, we've got the Costco, the big box stores, you know, the main grocery stores, and, and that's fine, and we're very blessed to be able to have everything we want at our fingertips. It's just a good half hour, 45 minute drive for me. So, I, um, I'll put pictures in and show you some of the meals that we come up with later in a different video and I'll pretend many of you are here with me, you foodies. Um, I'm kind of a foodie just because it's fun and so I hope you enjoyed this and got a little bit of you know enjoyment from the blah 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 part of it. I think the main thing for me what I've learned is to keep it simple, keep it streamlined, don't overcomplicate it. Because when I'm, you know, in the kitchen trying to do too much, I'm not able to be present with my guests. And I've done that way too many times where I've got this huge process going on and it kind of separates me from my guests and I'm not really good at sharing my kitchen at uh, Christmas and Thanksgiving, you know, everybody kind of knows just let mama, let mama Jay, let mom do her thing. You can do other things, you set the table, you can do those things, but you know, I kind of take over and you know, even when the kids come and visit in the night, if I hear someone in the kitchen, I jump up, I go out there, well, what is it you need? What can I, what can I make you? What, what do you want? You know, let me do it. And, you know, some of my son or daughter, in-law might just say, oh, I'm just making a sandwich. Oh, okay, well, here, let me help you. You know, it's hard for me to just let somebody do things in my kitchen. I'm, it's not that I'm a control freak. It's just that I want to be the one doing it, serving it, preparing it. I know where everything is and um, taking care of, you know, everyone. I'm, I have that mothering thing in me or grandmothering thing in me and that's okay. I'm good with it. The kids are good with it. The grandkids are good with it. When we've had grandchildren born, I go and stay with them and do a ton of cooking and freezing and, you know, nurturing my family. I love showing how much I care for people in what I do, cooking, serving, um, you know, providing nourishment. It's, it's one of my love languages. Cooking is one of my love languages. And so is going out to a restaurant. So I'm not, you know, completely chained to my kitchen. Make no mistake. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little blah, blah, blah of what I'm going to be doing today, in the next couple of days, getting my shopping going, getting my, you know, well, based on my planning, which I'm doing today. And um, I look forward to sharing some of the outcome with you all once I get there and we, our guests have gone home and will have fantastic memories. I know it. So tell me what are some of your go-to easy menus and um, I'd love to hear your stories. So thank you for tuning in. If you've gotten this far without either falling asleep or being bored to death. <laughs> and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye for now.